I remember seeing Tales of Kinzera Zhao for the first time at last year's Game Award and instantly being excited about it. The way the game director talked about the game and how important it was to him and the trailer they showed off got me super interested in checking this out. And today the game finally released and it is now 2.34 in the morning and I just finished playing through the game in one sitting. So let's talk about it. As always, if you guys are new here, please make sure to subscribe to the channel because we got a bunch more reviews, impression, and news videos about video games and movies all the time on the channel. Make sure to comment down below what you think of the game. Are you interested? Have you played it? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Tell me everything down there. And while you're at it, give this video a thumbs up because for some reason it helps the YouTube algorithm. Now, let's get into my review of Tales of Kinzera Zhao. In case you guys haven't heard of it before, Tales of Kinzera Zhao is a Metroidvania game where you play as Zhao, a shaman, who's going on an adventure to capture three spirits of different monsters to offer them to the god of death, Kalunga, so that he can revive his father who just recently passed away. I want to start this review by talking about the story. I think without a doubt that is the biggest positive for this game. I loved this story from beginning to end. I thought it was an amazing emotional story. I love the character of Zhao and everyone he interacts with. It's probably the biggest reason why I was able to play through this game in one, one sitting is because I loved every single interaction and I wanted to see through where he was going and what was going to happen with the story and I loved the ending as well. I think that it told a beautiful emotional story that will hit for a lot of people and it really hit for me I was I almost cried I tried to keep it in uh, but it was just an absolutely beautiful game for the story alone on top of that it is obviously a metroidvania so it does have a good mix of combat and platforming and I'll talk about the combat first I thought the combat was really really good you have two different masks you've got the sun mask and the moon mask and you can basically swap between the two at any point one of them is the combat is focused on long range where you're shooting these little blasts whereas the other one is focused on melee and you're going to be attacking from up close and personal on every single enemy and same as every other metroidvania the game has different abilities you're going to unlock as you power through so at the start of the game you're going to find these collectibles that you won't be able to necessarily reach or understand how to unlock but as you play through the game you're going to have six different abilities that you will find and they're going to help you go back to old areas to unlock some of the stuff that you missed out. I also really liked the, the abilities in this game. I thought that they were very unique and did add a lot. I also like that the double jump isn't one of the, the collectibles or the abilities. I know it sounds silly, but I've played a couple of Metroidvanias where you can only do a single jump and one of the abilities you get is a double jump. I felt like it was great to give us a double jump, the wall run, some of the stuff that were... I would say just mostly important to these kinds of game. They were there from the beginning and the abilities you unlock are very specific and unique to Tales of Kinzera, which I thought was a nice touch as well. I really, really like the art style for this game too. Uh, it does have a couple bugs and glitches on the on the visual sides, but overall it was beautiful. As you're running, the background just looks absolutely stunning. So lots of great art style. And I really hope that we continue to have games within this world. There's a whole area in this game that I don't want to spoil that they show off that looks incredible and you don't get to play in it at all. So I'd be very curious to know if they're going to do a sequel or another game in this universe because they seem to be teasing that there's something very different happening in this world that you don't really get to interact with much at all except for like one scene near the end. So I'm very curious and hoping that we're going to get more in this world as well. And without going into too many spoilers, the boss fight in this game are excellent. I loved every single one of them. At first, I was a bit worried that every boss was going to be the same, but they do have different sequences to get to them and after them. But the boss fight themselves are also really fun. You, they are basically just sponges, so they just take a lot of hits. But overall, they are very fun. You have to learn to dodge their attacks really well. And I thought it was a very enjoyable boss. And there weren't too many, which was a good pacing to the game. There is obviously collectibles to find. And you are going to be doing some backtracking to go back and find everything you missed now that you have all the abilities by the end. My only issue with this game right now with that side is that it is light on the collectibles and there aren't that many puzzles. So th this could be a positive or a negative depending on who you ask. For me, I thought my time was great with it, but I would do wish that there was just a little bit more to do in the post game. I basically finished the game and when I opened up the map, I was almost everything 100% done. So there aren't that many areas to go back to to find the stuff you missed. Whereas with most Metroidvania games, by the end, you are overpowered. You have all these abilities unlocked. You want to go back to every single area and find every single collectible. Talking about things I didn't really like, I do have to mention... Uh, some of the bugs and annoyances I had throughout the game. None of these things are broken and the game is not didn't crash on me or anything like that. 
but there were enough little things that happened that were annoying, uh, but nothing that they can't patch or anything like that. The biggest thing, which is going to be very weird, but you're going to understand, hopefully, is when you pause the game to check the map, when you unpause, so you go back to the game, your controls reset. And what I mean by that is that let's say you're holding the right stick to run in this direction, and then you pause the open up the map to see where you're going when you unpause if you're still holding the right stick your character stops moving and you gotta re like let go and go it's really hard to explain but playing it it was so annoying nothing front like i know it sounds like something so minor but playing it hopefully you'll understand what i mean you're going to open up the map a lot in a Metroidvania because you got to make sure you're going the right way and sometimes you'll be in the middle of a segment where you're platforming and then your controls just stop working and then you just fall to your death such small thing that i understand a lot of people are going to say like why are you complaining about this it is a big thing when it comes to metroidvania especially because i've never experienced a game do that to me ever before i cannot remember a game where when i pause the game it resets my controls very weird and it was a little bit annoying because i had a couple deaths and a couple moments where my controls just stopped working because i decided to check the menu a little weird for that um another thing there's going to be a lot of clipping through the world a, a bunch of times i was running around and i would jump and then my character would just get stuck in different stuff i'd have to pause reload my game again nothing they can't patch but enough there on the first day that i found uh that i had to restart a couple areas or or reload my game because my character kept getting stuck in different spots on top of the light collectibles, there also aren't that many enemy types in this game. So by the end, you're going to feel that you're fighting always the same enemies. I think there was like six-ish in total. So it did feel a little repetitive. And by the end, it wasn't, it wasn't any more new enemies. It was just, here are all the enemies at the same time with multiple waves. So depending on how you feel by that, um, it didn't feel like a puzzle to solve where every single enemy you wanted to try and cover up how to defeat them it was just oh now there's just a bunch of them just try and smack as many of you can and some of them got very annoying when they were mixed with others so i wasn't a biggest fan of the enemy types i wish there was a little bit more and i wish it didn't just throw a bunch of them at the end on us outside of that though the combat like i said was fun so can't really complain about beating them up <laughs> and outside of the combat i do want to talk about the platforming in the game the platforming didn't feel amazing it wasn't bad at all but there were a bunch of moments where i just felt like especially by the end you have these incredible platforming segments that you have to get through but they are so so precise and with the way the controls are sometimes like i, I don't want to spoil but one of them you have like a floating like a glide ability and the way it controls isn't great and you're going to end up dying a lot for things that are they're not going to really feel like it's your fault but more the game not reacting fast enough to your inputs sometimes you're going to be falling from high up and you have to glide at the right time and the camera just isn't fast enough to follow your character so i would die because the camera didn't keep up with my character little things like that were a bit annoying for the platforming segments but that was all near the end and nothing like major again it's just all these minor things that just wish that they would make the camera follow you a bit better uh and then just make the 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 platforming just a little less precise because some of them were just so so specific on how you have to pull it off that if you were just like a little inch off it just didn't count but it would count in any other game but because it's being an indie game uh it, the, they weren't able to program it i think in the best way possible so small things that hopefully they can patch them so my overall thoughts is that this game is great i think that this game is absolutely worth your time it is on playstation plus extra so if you have that membership you will be able to play this game for free and i think it's just 20 bucks everywhere else in american dollars it's 26.99 canadian um but i do think it's really worth the price especially for the story alone it is lighter on the content i finished the game in about six and a half hours focusing mainly on the story but like i said even going through the main story i completed 100 percent most of the areas on along the way getting the platinum will probably add an hour or two extra to the game to 100 percent the whole game so you're looking at something under 10 hours which is great in my opinion but i can totally see some people wanting a bit more out of their game I know I just mentioned a lot of complaints, but please remember that most of the things I just complained about are all very minor things. I think that the positives definitely outweigh the negatives with this game. The combat is excellent. Most of the platforming is really good. It's just a couple segments at the end that were frustrating. The boss fights are really good. The voice acting is stellar. I thought everyone brought the heat and they were so good and felt very emotional throughout the whole game. And the story was absolutely worth it. I do think you guys should definitely check this out. Whether and 
it's on everything from what I know. It's on Switch, on PS5 with PS PlayStation Extra. It is on Xbox and it's on PC. So absolutely highly recommend it. If you're new to Metroidvanias, this is a very, very good first metroidvania to jump into if you are a pro metroidvania this is another good one but again the light side of the content might turn you off as a fan of metroidvanias for me it worked but like i said important to note and it is now three o'clock in the morning and i just finished ed recording all of this i gotta go edit this video so thank you guys so much for watching please subscribe comment give the video a thumbs up have a good night take care Bye bye